Dom here from Essential RC. Thanks for tuning in for another flight test. We have here the He Wing T1 Ranger sent to us by our friends at Banggood.com. This is a wing designed for FPV. It uh, has two brushless electric motors and uh, needs a 2 to 3S 1800 to 5000 milliamp hour pack. Let's not hang around, let's take the components out of the box, let's see what we get. Boxes 1, 2, and 3, and a decal sheet. Okay, so all the components out of the box. Fuselage, wings, motor and speed controller already in place on both wings, servo already in place, but going to have to install some hardware to connect it up to the ailerons. Then we've got the horizontal stabiliser, we've got the elevator server in place, we're going to have to hook that up to the elevator. You've got the top cover, vertical stabiliser, wheels with their hubs and a little bag of hardware. So, shouldn't take too long, let's put this together now, see what it looks like. So very rapid putting this together. The online manual was fantastic. Uh, no, no real build tips, I'll be honest. It, uh, it goes together very simply. You do need a little bit of glue to, uh, like a Yoohoo paw to glue the foam wheels onto the rims and to put these um, covers in place. But otherwise it just um, screws or snaps together. So I've got it all programmed up with uh, an S8R receiver uh, through my TX16S. Uh, I've got a 2S2200 pack which balances it nicely. And that's how you check the CG. So let's take it down the flying field and get it in the air for the first time. Alright, so here I am with Jason down the flying field with the He Wing T1 Ranger. As I said earlier, you know, no build tips on this. It really is very, very simple to put, put together. Uh, no FPV gear in it at the moment. I've just got the 2S2200, did a power test, and it really does pull even on two cells. I don't see the point of putting three cells in it at the moment. You'd probably want to go two cells if you're going to put FPV gear in it to kind of balance out the weight and get the CG. But um, first time out, so I'm just going to fly it line of sight and let's see how it goes. Will it taxi on the grass, Dom? I think it will. They are quite big wheels. And as I said, they're, they're plastic hubs and you just um, glue on the, the foam wheels. Um, so have a, have a look inside, Jay. There's, so there's my uh, S8R receiver and then my 2200 two-cell pack up to the front. And that balances. You, you do the CG by holding it at the back of that. Okay. So that Const it balances on the spar then? Yes, I think so. that's clipped to the spar, isn't it? <clears throat> yep. It's quite an unusual design on the boom, isn't it? It's sort of held on with a compression joint. Yeah, we've not, I've not seen it done that way before. I think we've seen one other model with this boom style, haven't we? Mm. And this is certainly much better quality than that was. One thing I will say, having picked it up, is the density of this foam is really good, isn't it? Yeah, I, and they don't publicise it on the website, but on RC Groups, when they started the thread, the manufacturer said, this is the, the, the darker colour is the dense foam, and then if you get the white foam version, it's, it's less dense and it's lighter. So, <clears throat> choose which one you want to go for, I guess. So this is an unusual design. See that peg there? It clips onto the uh, carbon spar. Not seen it done that way before either. Gyro off for this. So the S8R comes with onboard gyro stabilization. I've got that off initially. <laughs> Ah, here's the thing. No, no rudder. No rudder, no. So ground control is 
Have you set up differential thrust? No. Ah, that that would be cool. You'd, and you'd that's get doable. The 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 leads for the motors are on separate channels, yeah. so that is doable. <coughs> Then you'd at least have a, a form of yaw. Yes. Because there is no rudder. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to launch? No, you know what? I would rather take this off from the ground. I think you're just going to have to gun it and hope for the best. It's funny these things you find out at the flying field, isn't it? <laughs> right, if nothing so else, to... Tom, proof you... that these are genuine maidens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's more terrifying than maiden flighting a turbine jet. <clears throat> so, I need to reduce the rates. I'll do three position rates. And also, it was, yeah, I think I need to move the pack slightly further forward. It as, did look a bit tail well. heavy in there. It, yeah. it was a bit pitch sensitive. So, let's do that, and then we'll be back for a further flight. Bit experimental and the ground handling, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, need differential thrust, but we'll do that next time. Okay, so after a rather terrifying maiden flight where it was just a slight movement on the stick and it was going <laughs> over there, <laughs> I've reduced the throws by at least a third, you know, down to a third of that. So uh, should be a, a lot less sensitive in the air. And what did I say? It was a bit pitch sensitive, didn't I? You so, did, yeah. <clears throat> Take two. That looked less scary. A bit less scary. So you've read uh, other reviews of this, haven't you, Jay? And people are using it successfully for long-range FPV? Yeah, people are doing FPV flights with these. Um, I think it's probably more of an FPV platform than a line-of-sight platform, yeah, okay. to be fair. Um, it's one of those, uh, it's quite a small model to shoehorn a lot of stuff into with FPV. That's the only downside, isn't it? Yeah. To fit a flight controller and a VTX and GPS. And I'd go with a much smaller, um, Crossfire receiver, I think. Yeah. The FR Sky one I've got in here. I mean, on two cell, it's not slow, is it? No. Good enough. And there are people flying them on the four cell as well. What, on these motors? Yeah. With no issues. Definitely not a windy day model, though, I don't think, is it? It's okay though, considering it's this small. I could turn the gyro on. That 
that's with the gyro on now. It's a bit more stable, I'd say. That's my first time using a gyro on the SAR receiver. That's even better, isn't it? That, that looks a, quite it's a lot definitely more, more stable. More locked in. More yeah. Smoother. <coughs> Impressively so, actually. Hands off. Oh, no. <laughs> So not a great landing, bit of turbulence. The gyro did not help. But and, uh, what you can see here that the wings are just push fit. So let's just push those back in. And I'm not happy, not ha happy finishing there. I'll do a, a landing without the gyro. It's on its wheels. So I don't know what, know what happened there with the gyro. The gyro was working flying when it was flying, so I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it didn't bring it in for a level landing. But, uh, you know, no damage. The wings popped off after they took the, uh, the hit and uh, ready to go again. So there you go, not bad. We'll try it soon with some FPV gear as well and uh, we'll refine it a bit more but thanks for watching this review from essential rc of the he wing t1 ranger we'll be back soon with another flight test thanks to jay on camera no if you've enjoyed this one then please subscribe click the bell icon for notifications of our future uploads and live streams but uh, we'll see you soon cheers That's my first time using a gyro on the SAR receiver. That's even better, isn't it? That, that looks a, quite it's a lot. Definitely more, more stable. More locked in. More yeah. Smoother.